Hey guys, welcome to my channel, Realm of Ori. In this video, we will continue with Volume 13, Chapter 4 Complete Victory, Part 7. And before we start, this video contains spoilers from the anime and manga series. And by the way guys, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon to get notifications for upcoming videos. So without further ado, let's get into the video. And just like that, the fight began before even a minute had passed and the challenger was dead. Presumably, that was it, Zijin had been strong to the point of being a mess. Although Kumara being so strong as to be abnormal also surprised me, Zijin's strength was not something she could match. It even made me think he might be better than me. He's the Superman of Beasts, which is even better than Hanada getting serious. If Zijin fights for real, the winner will be seen in a flash. How could such a strong master be nesting in a maze? What a waste, huh? That guy's a secret weapon, though. Can't let this guy out into the world. It's decided. The battle inside the maze ended without incident, giving me a temporary sigh of relief. In this way, out of the 700,000 imperial troops that had come from the ground, more than 530,000 had already been packed up. While it was essentially carnage, to me it represented nothing more than obtaining half a million souls. That makes a total of over 700,000 people. Seven subordinates can be allowed to evolve. I'll wait until the rest of the ground combat is over before I consider who to let evolve. There are less than 200,000 imperial troops left. It's still a big army, but it feels like very little compared to when it started. Right. It had been two days since they had last sent troops into the labyrinth, but nothing had moved since. Nor does it appear that there is any intention of sending any more troops in. If they continue to cling to the labyrinth, then the enemy commander will be too incompetent. The opponent's battle strength was gradually draining away, so normally, he would not continue to send troops into the maze. So that we don't have to kill out. So what's next? Not only is it better than the number of soldiers, but it's also the other side that has the upper hand, right? If the second legion is sent directly there, there will be casualties no matter what, right? The enemy's supply line is down. In fact, on a strategic level, it was as who won. It's gotten to this point, and all that's left to do is follow up. As said earlier, we're not going to let those invaders go back alive, are we? Benamaru is indeed very reliable. The Empire cannot be allowed to have that kind of boring ambition again. For that to happen, we must kill all the invaders. Benamaru also spoke the same words as Master Raphael, the King of Wisdom. This man really has no mercy on his enemies. Things have come to this, and I'm not going to object. I'm ready to come to my senses. Even if I will be resented, I will only be hated by the subjects of the Empire. It's just that, at any rate, I want to avoid even the West cursing at us. Answer. There's a proposal I'd like to try to see. Seeing that it doesn't say anything like that, it's probably not sure what the odds are. Can that be implemented right now? Answer. No. It takes preparation and some time, and hopefully can wait until the war is over. I see. That being said, there's no way to start some weird experiment while you're at war. Although I don't know what it's going to do, the person responsible for implementing it is me. I'll talk to Master Raphael, the King of Wisdom, about this later. I pulled my attention back to the Benamaru. He's going to burn down the whole enemy, which I accept. We can't die on our side. Is there any way to do that? As long as we, the leaders, are out there, no one will die. So what exactly should we do? The guards at Lord Rimuru's side must not move. Everyone listened and nodded. Looks like everyone agrees on that. As for the intruders into the labyrinth, they killed all but Michel and Raymond, right? Then there's no need to be so vigilant. As for the two people mentioned now, they are still taken as captives. It didn't look like they would betray, so there were no restrictions on their movements. Just to be on the safe side, we'll let them stay on the 60th floor first, then ask Gadra to keep an eye on them over there. Isn't that right? Just like I said, defecting to this side is the right thing to do, right? Just say it. Be thankful for us. We're going to have three dinners to show our appreciation. Geez, don't give them a hard time. We've been down the same road and can appreciate how you feel. That was probably the case, Gadra and Shinji and the others even stepped in for comfort. I guess there should be no need to worry about them. In this way, it is important to note whether there was an invasion of the town before the war started. Sue, is someone invading the town? Don't worry, it's all taken care of. Looks like it is. But since Sue had answered like that, that meant it was a great relief. Answer. This time the invaders of the maze were all but eliminated. It is confirmed that the individual named Krishna has used the resurrection bracelet, but he has gone outside the maze, so it is not a problem. Ah, so Krishna is still alive. Anyway, 
The inside of the maze seems to be safe, so there should be no need to worry so much. Meaning people like that Kansas, Minute, and Imperial Emperor close guard order. Those ranks would be better than me before I became a demon lord. According to Chloe, it seems that I didn't evolve into a demon lord before, so it wouldn't be surprising even if I was killed. If the Empire attacked under such circumstances, it would not be surprising even if we had no way to defeat them and I lost my life. I know that the King of Wisdom, Master Raphael, hates to lose to others, but it's too much to lose to say that. Indeed, perhaps Lord Rimuru is right. No, how can you lose a battle? Anyway, there's no point in talking about that now. The point is that there are masters on the Empire side too. There may be other masters left, and we should never take them lightly. People say I can't have fewer escorts, and this sentiment makes me happy, but I don't want you to get hurt because of it. Geez, since Lord Rimuru has said that, I'll strike too, and make this war over in the blink of an eye. Diablo, I won't let you run away. This is a great opportunity to introduce my secret troop to Lord Rimuru, and I'm definitely not giving this opportunity away. My lord, please wait. Wouldn't it be too much for you to give Testarossa and Ultima a chance to be active and me the only one who doesn't? Trouble has ordered me to attack this time too. Diablo, Sheehan, and Carrera, who opened the door and rushed in, began to clamor and scramble to strike. You guys, I know, I know. I will stay here and leave the final showdown to you. As a result, in the end, even Benamaru gave Diablo permission for them to fight. In this way, the question becomes what kind of combat plan is to be implemented. To confirm strength, the main force is my Red Legion of 30,000, plus Geld's Yellow Legion and Orange Legion who deployed an elite 17,000. From a qualitative point of view, they should also be able to compete with the remaining Imperial soldiers. We should be able to take tactical action according to the circumstances, and if we confine the battlefield to certain areas, we will have the upper hand most of the time. By the way, Sheehan, what is the approximate number of your secret troops? 10,000 in all. By the way, only those who can survive my special training are left inside, so they can be considered as having a minimum of B+. Are there really that many? Yes. In order to make them worthy enough to serve as Lord Rimuru's pro guard, I have secretly exercised them. But it's still overwhelmingly negative in terms of numbers. So I want to expect the leaders to perform. First, use a big move to throw your opponent into chaos, then take advantage of this time to kill them. And of course, the enemy is not silent and dry-eyed. Let's assume they're going to get in the way, so somebody's going to have to take the lead, it's just. At times like this, the Black Flame Prison is the most suitable one to use a large-scale burn attack. Only it's a pity that Benamaru is staying here as my bodyguard. So who should go? My lord, isn't it my turn to play? I peeked at Benamaru and ended up eye to eye with him. He nodded faintly and let me decide to assign the mission to Carrera. Oh, oh, let me this time, leave it to Carrera. You're going to use super glam magic to destroy the Imperial Army. Leave it to your men. Looking forward to it, my lord. Ah, Diablo just seemed to have something to say halfway through as well. Sorry, Diablo. What were you trying to say? No, nothing. Kufufufu. Not a very important thing. Great, Carrera. Um, I'm so happy. It always felt like there was a spark between Diablo and Carrera. Sorry, Diablo. In fact, I was just going to ask you to take care of the Supreme Commander on the enemy's side, only to see the look on Diablo's face ease up. Maybe the enemy still has a master we haven't seen, right? That guy named Krishna seems to have come back to life just now, and tracking that guy's aura is easy for you, isn't it? Of course, Lord Rimuru. There are likely to be intimidating masters lurking on the Imperial side. In order to force those guys out, we have to show them what we can do this time. Carrera, Diablo, please, we vow to do our best, my lord. Kufufufufu. What an emotionally charged order from Lord Rimuru. In order to avoid the obstruction of Carrera's magic, other troops were sent to thoroughly intimidate each other. If someone does come out to get in the way, then Sheehan will send her troops to deal with them. After I finished speaking, Benamaru took over to give instructions. Looks like he'll have no problem with leaving everything else to him. As for the formation, Geld will be in charge of playing the lead, and the Sheehan side will be playing guerrilla tactics, as mentioned earlier. The pursuit looks to the Red Army for firepower, as to who will be in command. Then this time send Gob. Wait a minute. Someone interrupted Benamaru's words, and it was Mamiji, the leader of the Tengu clan. She is also the daughter of Hakuro and is close to us. Having said that, it's a problem to be able to easily enter the control room in the midst of such heavy guard. I was kindly invited here by Lady Shuna. Since that made it okay, I decided to come and hear what Mamiji had to say. 
As for Lord Benamaru's agent, as his future wife, I think it's my responsibility. What are you talking about? Wouldn't that be nice? I decided to accept Momiji's offer. If it's Miss Momiji, she's also a pretty reliable comrade in arms. I'm with you. The Red Legion is a collection of powerful demons. Instead of just relying on the Red Flame Clan for control, we should have the Tengu Clan come along and help manage it. Even Geld said so, and the other subordinates were okay with it. No one seems to object, so let your wife take care of it, shall we Benamaru? No, but, I see, you're worried about your wife. That's one of the reasons. Huh? No, brother. Lady Mamiji has been preparing my brother's meal for the past few days. I hope to make my brother eat good food and ask me to teach her how to cook. In the face of such a positive attitude, I will not trample. Yes, is that so? Yes. But that incident is not the same thing as this one. Brother. Ew. It turns out that even Benamaru can't beat his sister? It's my brother's indecisiveness that's to blame. Because this indirectly made Lady Mamiji feel uneasy. Since you're a manly man, you should be strong and say exactly who you love. Albus versus Mamiji. I'm curious who Benamaru will pick, but it doesn't seem appropriate to talk about that right now. No, Lady Shuna, I'm going to win on my own. I won't let you sneak away. I didn't expect even Albus to show up. She lazily walked out from behind Shuna. Just now, I finally arrived here with reinforcements from Eurasania. We didn't ask, and we didn't hear about it, that said, Albus brought the letter from Milam. Do your best. All that aside, how did Albus come to be in the labyrinth? It was all through Lady Milam's magic. Wasn't it all the Lord Rimuru's referral? Milam went to get permission to talk to Ramirez through the mind talk, and sent the army straight into the maze. As messy as it felt that way, Milam was capable of anything. Then looking at the army led by Albus, there were 20,000 in all. Even Benamaru put on a bitter melon face after reading this. Since it was Milam's intention, then he couldn't refuse the reinforcements that Albus had brought, and the way things had turned out, presumably Mamiji would never back down. I know, I know. Mamiji, I'll just give you my army. You will be my agent. I'd love to. The next battle of woman against woman begins. Don't you pull my leg. What's that supposed to mean? It was as if seeing visions of sparks popping and flying apart made me a little uneasy about whether this would go wrong. Thank you.